Hello, everyone. My name is Peter Cartmill. I'm the uh, platform manager for Galvanic Apply Science ProTech 903 Tape Analyzer. Today, I will be presenting an introduction to the ProTech 903. We will cover tape system, measurement, analyzer design, installation, and maintenance. The tape analyzer is a uh, pro process gas analyzer. Uh, it, it's a tape system analyzer and it can measure the following components. It can measure H2S, total sulfur, arsine, phosphine, phosgene, and chlorine. This is a third generation platform. And it's manufactured here in Calgary, Alberta, over 30 years of installations. Some of the features we have for the ProTech is the, the low PPM detection. So basically, we can measure it down to 0 0.005 PPM or five parts per billion. Uh, it rivals laboratory sensitivity and, and then supports critical applications. The analyzer has what's called a, a predictive alarm analysis. This allows us to measure up to 300 PPM without dilution. Uh, the advantage of this is that uh, we have, first of all, you don't need a dilution system. And some of the advantage that it has, it can respond to an alarm within 20 seconds. Peak detective method, method measures above the cow range. So as I was mentioned before, so we can go up to 300 ppm. Uh, the peak detection works on basically uh, measuring the rate of change and it basically latches onto the highest rate of change and then reports that in PPM at the end of the analysis. The analyzer is also a multi-parameter option. Uh, we can do H2S total sulfur in one system up to four streams and this allows you to reduce your cost and having multiple analyzers to measure, uh, measure more streams. As mentioned, I said multiple stream capability. One analyzer can handle up to four streams. Benefits for this is fast return on your investments. Key applications for the, uh, the ProTech 903 is the natural gas processing for plant inlet, plant outlet uh, measurement for either H2S or total sulfur or both. Uh, natural gas pipeline uh, for custody transfer. Again, we can measure both H2S and total sulfur in the same analyzer. The NGL pipeline, the Y grade custody transfer, again, dual methods, we can do H2S, total sulfur, or both. For the refinery, we can measure flare, fuel gas, catalyst protection, and finish line monitoring. And the measurements again, for the flare would be H2S, total sulfur, for the fuel gas, catalyst protection, and fence line monitor, strictly H2S. In uh, the biogas plants, uh, custody transfer, um, we can measure H2S and total sulfur, but typically it's only H2S. Uh, there wouldn't be other sulfurs in the, in the, in the biogas. For the olefin, uh, catalyst protection, and the measurements there would be arsine and phosphine. So we're getting into the basics of the how the tape analyzer uh, sample system works. So as you can see on the on the screen here, the sample comes in. We have a coalescent filter. We have a sample sweep, and the sample sweep is basically a fast loop sweep. So we're bringing uh, first sample to the analyzer, and and removing any kind of delay from the sample point. We typically regulate the uh, pressure to the analyzer at 15 psi. We come down to a flow meter, and the flow meter is typically set to two, which is basically 80 to 100 cc's a minute. Out of the flow meter, we go into a humidifier, which is a, is a container that contains 5% acidic acid and balanced distilled water. What happens here is the uh, napkin tubing that's sitting above the water is, is picking up the moisture from the from the humidifier and humidifying the gas to 95%. Uh, to almost 100% uh, humidity. And then we take it in to a sample chamber where we expose it to the tape. And then out of the uh, sample chamber, it goes down into a what we call a, an adductor. The adductor 
basic design is to maintain atmospheric pressure out of the sample chamber to vent the atmosphere or to flare. Uh, the adductor requires a drive gas, so we come off our regulator at 15 psi. We, we drive the adductor with the 15 psi, basically creating a venturi, which sucks in the air from the bottom, maintaining atmospheric pressure, and goes out the vent. The vent rate is typically 1,000 cc's a minute, plus the 80 to 100 cc of sample going through the uh, uh, sample chamber. On the tape system, uh, we have a permeable membrane humidifier. It improves the chemical reaction, eliminates moisture carryover to the tape, and reduces dead volume for faster response. Again, I mentioned that the reason for the humidifier is if the wetter the gas, the faster the uh, response on the tape for speed reaction. Creates acidic environments. So the lowering freezing point to, to less than 32 degrees F and prevents bacterial growth. Arsine and lefosine does not use acidic acid. It uses uh, just distilled water and, and without the acid. This picture here you're seeing now is the uh, tape transport system. So you'll see on the upper wheel, wheel that's the supply take-up reel, up to 350 feet in length of tape to maximize, uh, uh, maximize the minimum of tape replacement. Uh, the supply reel comes up, goes through the sample chamber up to what's called a pulse counter. The pulse counter is used for a little, little tape alarm that measures the number of pulses produced by revolution and ensures exact even stain spacing on the tape, reduces stain spacing, maximize life. Inside the uh, sample chamber, we uh, install what's called a read rate aperture strips, and this controls the amount of gas passing on the tape. So basically, the higher the concentration, the smaller the aperture strip or the smaller the uh, opening on the, on the aperture strip that allow the gas to uh, stay in the tape. And the lower the concentration, the, hard, the, the, the bigger the uh, slit on the aperture strip to allow more gas to hit the tape. So this basically what it allows is to keep the uh, repeatability of the uh, rate of change in the same time frame, you know, approximately 140 to 170 seconds. The sensor block is has a light intensity compensation. An ADD converter improves noise reduction and monitors ambient temperature. So how the sensor block works basically is shining a tape at the beginning of analysis on the on the on the white tape. As the tape becomes brown or starts to turning brown due to the reaction of the H2S to the lead acid tape, uh, the, the amount of light being reflected back to the sensor block is reduced by giving us uh, basically a change in millivolts. And we actually just measure that rate of change. So the higher the concentration of the gas, the faster that tape's going to turn brown, the higher the rate of change. The compression head job is basically just to seal the tape to the sample chamber. Also allows the uh, tape to slide by from analysis to analysis. It ensures sharp and even stains for better accuracy. For the total sulfur system, uh, this is just a simple schematic of uh, how the total sulfur system works. So again, sample comes in, coalescent filter, we regulate it. Uh, basically, out of the regulator, which is not shown on this picture, we would be blending hydrogen with that sample going into the uh, to the total sulfur oven. And in the oven with the hydrogen and the sample, all the total sulfur is converted to H2S. And then again, it just goes back up through the flow meter, humidifier, and onto the tape. And we just measure it as an H2S. But really, it's the, uh, it's the total sulfur. So all the sulfur is converted to H2S. And the analyzer will then, you can, has the ability to subtract the H2S out of the total sulfur value and end up with just a total sulfur measurement. So for the utilities for the total sulfurs, as mentioned, uh, hydrogen is required for the conversion. 
the oven run operates around approximately around 950 degrees C. So basically with the hydrogen mix with total sulfur, it'll convert to H2S. Some of the features we have when the total sulfur is we, we have the ability to turn off the uh, turn off the hydrogen for the uh, for the H2S measurements. So we're not uh, using using uh, hydrogen in the H2S mode to you know save cost and and reduce the consumption of the hydrogen. Um, hydrogen utility here says turned off for H2S mode, combines H2S and total sulfur units. Heated quartz tube, the sulfur conversion takes place. So in the center of the oven, there's a quartz tube in there and that allows the um, total sulfur to be converted to H2S at a high temperature. And the quartz tube basically can withstand that, that 950 degrees C's without breaking or bending. Coming out of the oven, uh, we have what's called uh, flame arresters. And the flame arresters basically text the, uh, the the certainty of the oven and if there's a, a flame out or a fire in the oven because there's a leak, the flame arresters will prevent uh, any hazardous conditions outside the oven. For the measurement, so the analysis sequence, so the sample is extracted from the gas, the gas pressure regulated is regulated and filtered. The gas sample gas is humidified. The gas comes in contact with the tape. Reaction causes tape stain on the tape. The darker stain is less light reflected back to the sensor block, and the rate of change of the tape is measured, and that rate of change is proportional to the concentration. For the theory of the operation, so the reaction of H2S and lead acetate impregnated paper tape forms lead sulfide. So as the H2S comes into contact with the, the lead acid tape, you can see the formula on the screen there. So basically you got your you got your lead, you got your acid, and then it produces H2S plus lead and leftover um, acidic acid. So PV being lead, the CH3COO is the acetate, H2S is the hydrogen sulfide, uh, the PBS is the lead sulfide, and the CH3COOH equals the acidic acid. For the total sulfur, the sample reacts with the hydrogen. It says here at 900, so it could be anywhere from 900 to 950 degrees C's in the course two, and then all sulfur species is converted to H2S. So the Protec 903 has two types of uh, measurement. The fixed time interval method, which is basically the three to four minute analysis time regardless of the range at the aperture strip to size for to optimize the stain. So if you look at the chart, basically you can see that the curve is not linear. So we basically wait up to about 140 seconds where we start getting into the, the linear range of the uh, staining. And this is, means that the rate of change is no longer uh, increasing and it's staying fairly constant and repeatable through the stretch. So from the 140 seconds to the 170 to 180 seconds, uh, basically we do, we just uh, basically do an average over the 30 seconds. And then at the end of the analysis, we would update concentration based on that rate of change. So if you see the concentration, we'll basically equals whatever the gain of the analyzers and then multiplied by the rate of change and that is the constant will become the concentration. So the higher the rate of change, the higher the concentration. Again, the lower the rate of change, the lower the concentration. The limitation using the fixed time interval is limitation above 50 ppm because it's fixed time and if the if you go over the 50 ppm, or basically the tape will become too dark and the rate of change will drop off before the analysis, giving you a false reading for the concentration. So it has narrow lin linearity. The rate of the increased reaction over time affects both the lower and the high range. The peak detect method is best for 
for 0 to 50 ppm up to 0 to 300 ppm ranges to allow for over range. The maximum rate of return calculates to allow a faster analysis sequence. So what happens in this operation is basically analyzers just looking at the rate of change and what it's waiting for is the highest rate of change that the uh, the sensor block sees and at that point as the rate of change starts to drop off the the highest point or the highest rate of change is captured and the rate of change times the gain at the end of the analysis will become the concentration so we can have the analysis time out to eight minutes. We can actually pick up the, uh, the highest concentration early on, say 20 seconds, 10 seconds, or even a minute, and it just hangs on to that. And then eventually at the end of the analysis, it will update with the concentration. What's not affected here in, in both modes for, for the time or the peak detection is that rate of change is monitored by your high, high alarm set point. So any time during the analysis that the rate of change time of the gain equals your high, high concentration, it's gonna go into alarm. So this could happen at 10 seconds, this could happen at a minute and so forth. So what's important about the uh, rate of change and the high, high alarm set point this is the only guarantee you have for the analyzer to shut in. So it's really important that in, in the in the uh, setup of the software using the GUI and you set your uh, high high alarm set point, you probably would want to you need to monitor that 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 alarm. And generally, we like to have the customers latch that alarm. So if it hits that alarm it'll latch it'll stay into alarm in alarm until the analyzer comes back below that alarm set point if this is not latched and allowed the, the analyzer to continue on what can happen in in the operation of the tape is if the concentration has gone too high the tape will go black and then the tape will be black before the next analysis so as the tape sees advances the tape and it's black, your rate of change is gonna be zero, so the analyzer is gonna update the zero. So that, that high, high alarm point, set point is pretty important for a, for a tape operation. For measuring non-H2S compound, compound, our scene, it, uh, basically I mentioned before, we're using just DI water humidifier, and it gives a gray stain, where H2S would give a brown stain. Uh, Phosphine, again, uses DI water in the humidifier, and it produces a brown stain. For the phosphine, there is no humidifier, and it gives a red stain, but it uses a different uh, sensor block and basically uses a different LED, color LED in the uh, sensor block. For the chlorine, there's no humidifier. It gives you a pink stain. Again, it uses a different sensor block with a different uh, color LED shutting on the tape. Measuring non-H2S compounds. Uh, several types of uh, way you can calibrate this analyzer is a cheap and simple way is a color card calibration. Sometimes bottle gas is not always available, toxic or unstable compounds. Color card concentration into the GUI for the RC, phosphine, and phosphine and chlorine. Um, for onboard calibration, we, you can get what's called a CalGas generator. This is using a permeation tube. This eliminates calibration cylinders, helpful for remote installation. Um, the device that we typically use is what's called a G-Cal device for RC phosphine H2S. So basically what the Cal gas device does is basically if it's filled with their component of interest and basically it permeates at a certain rate based on temperature. So the, we would order the Cal device you know, with a certain concentration, it would come with a curve based on the temperature of the, of the device, and then that would tell you what the uh, permeation rate would be in P PPM or PBBs. The L start device for the phosphine and chlorine and H2S. So the GCAL permeation, as I mentioned, the reservoir contains small volume of the analyte of interest. 
emitted and are basically permeates the, uh, the analyte mix without a carrier gas. No temperature control is required and it could just mount on the, on the analyzer back panel. So when you do actually go do a calibration, basically whatever the room temperature is, there's a there's a certification that comes with a curve on it and you can calculate the permeation rate and basically based on a one meter flow across the top of the uh, permeation device. So typically you use either nitrogen, uh, if it's an H2S total sulfur unit, if it says H2S only, you could use instrument air across there for the for uh, delivering the uh, cow gas to the to the to the tape. The Elster permeation, uh, basically this is just a reservoir with a small volume of analyte permeation two in a climate controlled box, not at near the analyzer. So this basically helps you figure out the, the uh, permeation rate or whatever the concentration coming out of the device is by if we will maintain a constant temperature so the temperature doesn't fluctuate with room temperature and then the, the permeation rate would be the same at all times so basically if you know the temperature you know the flow rate the concentration will stay the same without any fluctuation from ambient temperature so sample conditioning. So for any analyzers, uh, sample conditioning is, is is very important because if you can't deliver a nice, clean, dry uh, sample to the analyzer, you're going to have issues and maintenance problems. So for the sample requirement, we typically will deliver 14.9 psi or 1,100 cc per minute, free of particles and moisture we can operate up to 80 degrees C or 32 to 176 degrees F. The sample uh, um, dew point for the moisture. So we want to make sure that uh, the moisture content can be almost the moisture content can be almost uh, up to 100% as long as it's not uh, condensing. Uh, extract the sample to the analyzer, uh, vapor phase without condensable liquids, atmospheric, local pressure, and temperature. So what we're seeing here is on the right-hand side of the picture is some of the sample conditions that we we use. So the probe on the left that's in the pipe is basically has a membrane filter on the tip. So what that does will knock off any liquids or particles into the pipe and just allows the uh, dry uh, clean gas to come up the up the probe and it, this one happens happens to have a uh, a regulator on the top of it attached to it so that regulator would be typically set to 25 psi because as as it comes over to the analyzer the analyzer's uh, regulator is going to be set to 15 so that gives you kind of a, a two stage regulation for the analyzer to give you better repeatability so as mentioned the sample conditioning options so pressure regulation and filtration sample probe example there's there's welkers there's an yeah, A plus Genie. There's all sorts of different types of uh, probes out available in the market. So for the Protec 903 design, this is kind of our uh, fleet that we have for the tape analyzer. Starting from the left is the uh, 903W H2S, which is just a dip two analyzer. It's a, a more affordable uh, analyzer for for the customer if they can operate this in a dip two area uh, build typically it's just a single stream analyzer so up to one stream and 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 and, and it's affordable the next one is the 903d2 which is another dip two analyzer but this one this analyzer will allow you up to four streams on this analyzer plus uh, auto cal the uh, 903D2, again, with the H2S, but this time it has the uh, total sulfur option on, on the oven on the bottom. So this allows you to do both H2S and total sulfur measurement. And then the next one over is the 903D1. So this is our DIB1 model. And again, 
it has H2S and total sulfur, or you can just simply get it as an H2S analyzer without the total sulfur analyzer. Protec 903 design, so the enclosure, so the 903W is a fiberglass enclosure. Uh, the 902D2, D1, and CE is a stainless steel. Um, basically, the temperature ratings from zero to 50 degrees C or 32 to 122 degrees F is what it's certified for. Uh, for the utilities, uh, they come in 24 volts DC or anywhere from 90 to 230 volts AC. Uh, solar power is an option. The maximum uh, for an H2S analyzer only, just by itself, draws about 10 watts. Um, for the TS model, it draws up to 250 watts for the total sulfur. Uh, if you add any solenoids to it, you can basically add like 0.4 watts for each solenoid that's attached to the analyzer. These are all the certifications. So again, class one, DIB one, DIB two, ATEX, IEC, X01, Indian, CC, OE, the China pattern approval, the Russian pattern approval, and Russia, TR-CU approval. For the electronic enclosure on the, um, on the motherboard, uh, basically, for customers' uh, connections, we have six analog outputs. We have two analog inputs. We have a Modbus capability. And the Modbus is, is uh, throughput. It is not uh, T TCP IP uh, platform. Uh, for the DIP2, we can install a serial to Ethernet converter. To do that, the, uh, the TCP IP uh, uh, platform. It also has Ethernet for the GUI, so you can, from anywhere in your network system, you can log on to the analyzer and modify the modify the uh, in the GUIs or do remote calibration and so forth. It has digital inputs and up to six relays for uh, dry con out outputs for alarms and what whatnot. Corrosion protection, self in the environment, epoxy coated components, and does not require any purge in the analyzer, so, so no trickle purge required. The analyzer comes with a local LCDD extendable keypad. So this intrinsic uh, keypad, so you do not have to declassify the area to make changes to the analyzer for the, uh, especially for the, uh, the uh, class one did one analyzer so this keypad's available it's intrinsically safe and that allows you to go in and modify uh, all sorts of things in, in the software so as for say you want to do a calibration an auto cal you can do this from the keypad you got to you can go in there and reset the uh, tape counter when you replace the tape so if you replace the tape with a 330 foot tape, you go in there and reset that counter back to 330 and away you go. For the uh, predictive alarm analysis, the DVDT constantly monitored. If the DVDT gain is greater than the set point and then it'll go into alarm. Upset condition reported in less than 20 seconds. So again, the Analyzer is uh, basically looking at the rate of change at all as the tape's turning, going from white to brown. And then any times that rate of change times the gain is set to your high, high, high alarm set point. In this case, you see you set to 18. If it hits 18 at any time during the analysis, the analyzer will go on alarm and will, in this case, uh, activate relay number two, giving you indication that the analyzer is an alarm. Here are some of the installations you, you see that, that, that they're out in the field now. Um, basically, the first one on the left-hand slide, it's basically just an analyzer on a back pan inside, a, a, inside of a building. Uh, the, the metal one is also looks like it's inside of a building, but we, have, we offer the uh, NEMA 4 enclosures with windows or without windows. And the third picture on the right is our uh, CE version of the uh, ProTech. 
for the European uh, market. Scheduled maintenance. So the maintenance on the ProTech analyzer is monthly replace tape, and at the same time I would calibrate. Quarterly, just replace the humidifier solution or just top it up. Uh, yes, twice a year or every six months, uh, clean the sample chamber. What happens is as the tape is rubbing, moves across the front of the uh, sample chamber, and where the opening is for the light shines through, it builds up uh, lint from the tape. So that needs to be cleaned out at least twice a year. So typically just pull back the compression head. If you have a can of a little aerosol spray, uh, gently in there and just give it a little squirt of all the dust out of there and then you should be good to go. Annually for the uh, total sulfur analyzer in the oven there, um, it's not a bad idea to replace the coarse tube and the O-rings. Um, the coarse tube over time builds up uh, what's called coking and it coats the tubes and eventually it Depending on the process, how heavy the hydrocarbon, the, the amount of coking is determined by basically if there's heavy hydrocarbons, you're going to get more coke buildup in that tubing, in that glass, in that quartz tube. So, yeah, recommended to at least inspect it and then and replace the O-rings to ensure that you don't have any leaks. For the uh, tape storage and disposal, the shelf life is many years in in the dry steel container. As long as that package is not open, the five years should be no problem for that uh, for that tape. Uh, for disposal, you follow your local requirement. Um, basically, you have to find out what how much lead is allowed to be this lead is allowed into your uh, local uh, garbage dump. We offer a service, so we are local on site for startup uh, preventive maintenance and training. We also we can offer remote uh, FATS. Uh, you can do the FATS on site or SATS, as they call it, or remote. Uh, we, we can remotely do it from from their office. So we have a full service team here in Calgary and also in. United States and we have one service uh, tech over in China. Why the ProTech? Well ProTech basically the fact that it's uh, the sensitivity and how low lead us tape, tape can measure down to so for five parts per billion that's you know tape analyzer are probably the best uh, for this application. Uh, other analyzers can't quite get that low with the newer technologies that are out there right now. So, uh, so the ProTech 903 advantage it supports critical applications. Uh, it has the alarm within 20 seconds, and it has a fast, high range analysis. What if scenarios? Star event occurs. The 903 has the overrange capability of hazard air certified without a purge. So why ProTech 903? Not one size fits all. Example, H2S application. So we have multiple platforms to measure H2S. So the technology, uh, we have the Aculase. Uh, the Aculase is, uh, is a TDLAS, basically a laser. Uh, its range is 0 to 10 or 0 to 500 ppm. Uh, sensitivity is 0 0.15 ppm. Uh, T90 response is 30 seconds. Interference none. Consumable none. Operation is simple. Tape analyzer, the ProTech 903, 0 to 300 ppm or 0 to 10% with dilution. Sensitivities down to that five parts per billion. Uh, T90 response can be three to five seconds, but it will could be with the uh, high, higher alarm set point. It could be 20 seconds or less, depending on the concentration. Uh, tape, let us tape does not have any interference. Uh, consumable, yes, you got to replace the tape uh, five to six weeks. Operation is also simple. The FPA 4100 is a direct UV 
um, basic the range is zero to zero point five uh, gallons per, per g per l uh, or zero to one hundred percent h two s so uh, sensitivity is five ppm p nine response is thirty seconds there is interference the sumbo none operation is simple. The next analyzer we have is our AccuChrome, so it's a TCD-based uh, GC. The range is 0 to 1000 ppm or 0 to 100%. So the lower detectable limit on, 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 on a GC is, would be about 1000 ppm, which would be a good place uh, to start working from. Uh, so sensitivity is 10 ppm. Four minutes for the T90 response. No interference, uh, no consumable operation. Is it's some complex depending on the application. The Sulfa Chrome. This is a, a chemical essence uh, based GC. Uh, this basically can speciate all the sulfurs. So if we're just looking at H2S, uh, we can do zero to 10 ppm and up to 5,000 ppm. Sensitivity is 0 0.1 ppm, uh, three to 15 minutes uh, in any response, depending on the application. Um, if it's H2S only, we could do that, you know, under two minutes. Interference, there's none. Consumables, yes, there is consumables. And operation, again, is complex. Why Protec? So some of the upgrade benefits is some of the older models like our 801, 802, and 902. Uh, these these analyzers can be upgraded to the to, to the 903. Rapid return on investment, never miss an unexpected SAR event, guaranteed product quality compliance, automatic custody transfer validation, avoids pipeline lockout. Galvanic helps you protect your assets. 0 0.005 ppm sensitivity every three minutes. 40 years in the natural gas industry. Some of the uh, PDL tape, GC, UV, EVC. These are these are some of the uh, analyzers that uh, we we produce here at the factory. If you have any questions after uh, watching this uh, PowerPoint, you can contact me uh, here at the uh, factory in Calgary. And if not, you can also contact your uh, Galvanic sales force, which is Ian Tao, Salem Pandian, Michael Barnett, or Michael Mellon. Mill and we also have local represent representatives and authorized distributors.